Alright, before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that it has been about a week since I posted the video, and the reason is because I've been working tirelessly on the four Loki season cards, which I posted and hope to have a video on soon. If you guys do want to check out the cards for this war and don't care to watch this video, that is totally fine. Skip ahead to about the 12 minute and 30 second mark. You guys will find them there. What's up, guys? War 11 of season 21. We're almost at the finish line here. We're currently ranked 8th in Master, we're actually 11th, and we're up against Indominus Rex. We faced these guys last season. Uh, last season they, they were Platinum 2, it looks like that they're Platinum 1 right now, uh, just based on that little emblem next to their Alliance tag. But either way, um, you know, we should win this war probably pretty comfortably, no disrespect to those guys obviously. Their defense was pretty good, though. Uh, but their defense, like their placement, is pretty good. It was, um, it was not a, a cinch to, to plan for, and to assign uh, paths for. So they did a good job. I'm going to be on path five in section one. I've got Mephisto, and then Nick Fury on the heavy hitter. So I'll bring Quake for Mephisto, and my plan there is just to. I get off a of parry, and then while he's stunned and thus concussed, I'll throw a heavy. Because of the concussion, my heavy won't trigger aura, so I don't have to worry about taking that damage. And then I'll be using Magneto for Nick Fury, and I'm going to bring the Magic Synergy for that. So those are my three attackers decided by my Section 1 path, uh, Quake, Magneto, and Magic. And then in Section 2, I'm going to... I use Quake on this Clairvoyant, that's EMP modification. And I'm going to use Quake on that Torch. I'm going to be on path one, the very top left path there. So I've got Torch, and then I'll use Magneto for the Stealth Suit Spider-Man there on Enhanced Buffet. And then um, we've also got TJ is going to be on path two. Uh, with his red Magneto, which is also rank 3, and um, he's going to take this Taskmaster to give TJ a little bit more action. But I would like if he becomes unavailable, then I can take it. It doesn't really matter. So there's that. And then on Mini Island, um, the, I'm going to be taking the Dragon Man boss with magic. Since I'm bringing her already for the Magneto synergy, and locking his power down is the best and safest way to deal with him. I'll just use magic. I'll use a power start one boost, big mystic boost, and just nuke him down best I can. So that's the plan for the war. Let's go ahead and join. And then as usual, what I'll do is I'll walk on over to my paths. And then I'll cut this live portion of the video. And you guys will just see me when I take those fights. Or you'll see the fights when they happen. So here we go, section one. We've got Mephisto, of course. I'm throwing on some boost because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be taking the Nick Fury directly after this. So uh, I want to get myself a little bit cornered. I'm just going to go for a parry here. And then at the end of that parry, while he's concussed, I'm going to throw my heavy just to get that protection off uh, from the ebb and flow knockdown. Uh, you see, there it is again. It pops up, and um, I'm just going to throw another heavy. As long as he's concussed, basically if he's stunned and I'm charging my heavy, um, you know, he's not going to get the aura of incineration. I won't have to worry about that damage. Um, now, this fight is sped up uh, until the end of his first life. Then I'll slow it down a little bit and talk specifically about uh, what my strategy was. It's the same as you guys have seen on this channel and other channels. Um, basically for the last, uh, you know, the entirety of the season, a little bit last season when Magneto's buff went live. But, um, yeah, you basically just want to uh, build up your permanent prowess up to five and then uh, weave in some combos just to control his health. Now here, um, I'm not going to throw my heavy yet because I want to get him down a little bit more. I do throw my heavy, so now I've got 12 seconds, I believe. Uh, I'm going to back off and here... I is actually a little bit late to throw my heavy, which kind of worked out perfectly because he's stuck at 1%. I'm going to back off. 
Um, and when I throw my heavy, the, ac the actual damage from the heavy attack kills him and inflicts the heal block uh, because it took him over um, into his second life with the uh, direct damage from the heavy, not the secondary energy damage. Then the heal block was inflicted after he had changed over to LMD. I did throw the special three just for safety, but had I not thrown that special three, it still would have heal blocked him. It's a lot riskier strategy to try to rely strictly on his heavy attacks um, because you can't really control whether or not they crit. And if they don't crit, um, you know, obviously it's going to be a different outcome than if they do crit. If they do crit, maybe um, it'll take him over or closer to, close enough to uh, the end of his LMD that the energy damage from the heavy takes him over into a second life. And in that case, the heal block will not apply. So um, that fight was very quick and easy quake fight. Um, here I'm going to back myself into a corner. And for whatever reason, I just felt a lot more comfortable this war uh, playing parry style quake. I think um, the thought with uh, Clairvoyant was if I'm dexing, then that's a buff that she can nullify if I was to screw up. And then in this case, if I was to screw up, I would get incinerated. And uh, while one or two incinerates wouldn't hurt me that much, it's more damage than obviously I, I took playing parry style. I lost just a few percentage points of my health. So um, here I just want to wait to start, basically start doing my stuff here until he's magnetized. Um, that's why I was blocking at the beginning of that fight. But once he's magne magnetized, uh, so a, a second after the fight starts, the fight is over. As long as you can um, nail your parries and heavy him, then this is... Um, I mean, it's, it's uh, easier than an arena fight, I think. Um, because you're not dealing with the crazy arena AI. So, um, I do want to bait out a special two here. Uh, that's really the only thing in this fight that I'm going to, uh, you know, that I'm you know, concerned with. And um, I ended up just screwing it up. Now, again, it, in war, you play all these different game modes, and you, especially when you're playing constantly at a top level, you're always instinctively trying to dex um, special attacks, especially if you've done it before and you feel comfortable doing it. And um, there I just should not have tried it. It was just uh, too risky. I ended up losing a bunch of health. Um, it didn't matter because I did not use Magneto again for this war, but um, it was just stupid. He's also got a 50% perfect block chance against metal uh, defenders, so I probably would have taken maybe 1% or 2% of my health on, that, on those block hits. Now, here we sent a Mephisto originally, and the block damage from this guy... Um, was just too much to handle for a rank 5 Mephisto. This is a rank 3 Nova. This is very good placement. I think this is the best best placement on the map for Novas, um, especially rank 3s because of the health pool, and he does, um, his mediums do scale with their attack based on the distance that he travels. Um, so Quake is not an ideal matchup, and I don't believe that Quake, uh, this, obviously, they replaced with Stubborn. I don't think that Quake could do this fight without perfect quaking um, in a specialized style specifically for Nova, um, wherein you would essentially play deck style right up until the point where um, the indestructible timer is, uh, or your aftershock timer is about to convert into um, an aftershock, at which point you would need to get off a blocked hit uh, to remove the indestructible. But um, Quake can absolutely do this fight. You, you guys saw at the beginning of this fight, I, it was a little bit rocky because um, I was I, I had the spacing all messed up with his heavy attack and my uh, my dexing, but um, I was able to pick that up after getting punched. I think for the second time or uppercut for the second time from his heavy attack. And uh, Quake is a, is a fine matchup. I think that a fully boosted Quake with um, deep wounds only would do fairly well against a rank 5 Nova, but a rank 3 Nova, it's just a little bit different animal, I think. Um, now this fight, I'm going to start by blocking just to make sure that I have Limbo active, and I actually screwed up. Um, just everything was messed up about that. I didn't let off my block early enough. Um, my intent was to try to get myself power um, without sacrificing too much health. And I just messed it up. I ended up not only not getting myself power from taking 
um, hits during Limbo, but I got uh, heavied after Limbo had expired. So he became unblockable. Um, I incinerated a little bit, and I did not get the health back. So that was just silly. But um, at this point, I've got him locked down, and I'm going to be very, very cautious. Now, the boss AI in the past, um, especially using magic, but basically, historically, when I've taken bosses, they have been magic fights. Um, in fact, I can't remember a boss that I've taken that wasn't a magic fight. Um, and, you know, I have a lot of experience with magic uh, from back in the days when Killmonger was, you know, the meta placement on Node 29 in the first map. And, um, you know, I feel really good with her and I I've just kind of always been the de facto magic guy in our battle group for the most part. There have been some other players, but um, anyway, uh, the boss AI changed around season 12 uh, where it was not safe to do any kind of dash back uh, intercepting or or anything so i'm just going to stand in front of him and just hold my block bait out a heavy be very very safe i am going to do four hit combos there i get a little bit risky because i feel like um, i was running a little bit low on my power lock timer and I wanted to get back up to my SB3. I go for the stand-up intercept, and the boss AI is just different. I mean, I it's just so difficult to land those stand-up intercepts on the boss node. And a lot of times, if you try to do a, bash, a dash back intercept with a medium attack or a medium intercept, uh, you'll either get parried or you'll get caught. And uh, this this is the only node on the entire map that, that it's been a consistent issue for me. Um, and... If you guys have been watching the channel for several seasons, you know that back, I think, in season 17, 18, in that range, um, I was taking, uh, during Flow Wars, I was taking Mojo Bosses at, with Magic, and I had a, a decent run there where I had a few solos in a row, and then I just lost it, and I, I was getting my ass kicked regularly by Mojo, and I had to give up that responsibility to a much better player uh, who took care of business. But anyway, uh, that was the war. Um, we had a pretty rough war as a battle group. We died four times, so that was disappointing. But um, I got the solo at the end. Here are the cards. I did get a silver card, and then Sire with the gold card, and Hen with the platinum card. Um, awesome wars to Sire and Hen, and I had a pretty decent war myself. So that was the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will be posting the final um, war video of this past season um, tomorrow. Um, so stick around for that. And then uh, I hope to do a season recap video at some point where I look over some of my personal stats, kind of more an infographic type of video. And then I also plan to do a video um, that tours all of the four Loki cards from this past season, from the individual war cards to the end of the season rewards cards. Um, and, and all that stuff. So uh, stay tuned to the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a like and a comment on this one, and I'll see you in the next one.